Welcome to the world of the singing ship. We gon' make you sing and you taste for the wind. From the Pomerola River to the East Coast, from the East to the East, from Joy to Georgetown City. I can win me what I want to the hinterlands from the coming. Welcome to the world of the singing ship. Let me make you sing and your taste buds wet. Um, my name is Eon John and this is the Singing Chef Show. Today we are going to be making chicken patty pie. It's a, a, like a version of beef patty pie which my grandmother used to make. In fact, your grandmother used to make, maybe your, your mother's used to make, you know, like it's a very, it's a Guyanese favorite. And what we're going to do is that we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to use whole wheat flour, which that's 200 grams of whole wheat flour. And there's 200 grams of the white flour that we've got here, which is, these are flowers from Namilko. And let me tell you something about Namilko. Namilko is a Guyanese company that makes flour. And these two flowers come from Namilko. And as you can see, we've got here all the different varieties of the products that they make. We've got wheat germ, there's a whole wheat flour, all-purpose flour. Uh, We've got multi-grain flour. There's even this really fantastic high fiber whole wheat flour. And there's the polari flour, the cake flour. How amazing Guyanese companies. This is one very amazing Guyanese company that makes these different flours. They've developed it over 50 years. Fantastic. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the flour, the brown flour in, the whole wheat flour and the milko flour and all-purpose flour there. We have here uh, Maid Marian whole wheat flour and Thunderbolt all-purpose flour. Uh, 200 grams of each, which I've put in from this bowl. The reason why we mix them together is because it makes the dough a lot more malleable. We're gonna be making a short crust pastry, basically like a butter pastry, which is like really good for the pie crust. And this is a healthier option than just using white flour. Like, I would never say not use white flour. I think white flour, it's, in certain recipes, that's all you can actually use. But anytime you get a chance to actually go healthier, you, you, so, you know, to mix in something else with it. So this is why we're actually going to do this, is to give you an option for a slightly, you know, a healthier option. I'm just going to mix it around so that it all mixes together. And then the first thing I'm going to add is, is the oil. Right? So basically, all these pastries, a lot of these pastries, it is half fat to flour. So if you have 400 grams of flour, you want 200 grams of oil and fat. That was only 100 grams. So of that's coconut oil, of lowest coconut oil. And here, we're going to add the butter. Right? And we're just going to mix it together a little bit with a whisk and then I'm gonna knead it. But the thing with this is that you don't really want to overwork it too much, right? You almost wanna just turn it into a very flaky mixture. Okay, this is the fun part. And that you see where it just turns into this flaky mixture because you want to get all that fat into the flour and the made Marian whole wheat flour. Very good, right? Once you get it to this this consistency, this is when you add the oil. I mean, this is when you add the salt and the water which that's only like about half a cup of water, like this. Just put it into a ball, and I'm gonna put that into some cling foil, some cling fill, and then I'll put it in the fridge for about half an hour. <laughs> Now we got a nice ball here. What we're gonna do is let's get some cling fill. God, I love making this. Right, uh, we can just roll that up in a little bit of cling fill, make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna put it in our fridge. Shall we have a word from our sponsors and we'll be back.
Caribbean rice from the lush rice fields of Guyana straight to your home. Caribbean rice, our people, our rice. Royal Chicken, great value and so tasty and delicious. Available at your local supermarket. At Chief, we put more in so you'll get more out of your cooking. Whether it's succulent baked fish or chicken, yummy pizza or creamy pasta, flavorful chow mein or tasty veggie dishes. The chief reason is always taste. Right now, we're gonna make the filling for our pie, our chicken patty pie. Guyanese chicken patty pie. Let's get our onions ready. And I'm gonna show you a technique for cutting onions, okay? You do that, you top and tail it, because it will help save your fingers, especially if you have to cook a lot. Just go into, you see how I go almost to the end, but not all the way through, because I need this finely chopped. And I'm doing this slow, right? I do the same thing with this, right? And they always say that you should go towards this, you should cut towards that side. It doesn't matter, as long as you don't go all the way through, right? Just, you go close to the end, you see like this? And at first you do this kind of thing very slowly, right? And then, this is the important part, is you put your hands like this, right? You see this claw position? You put your hands like this, and when you put it on, remember that you don't have to press down your food. It's not running away anywhere, and it's definitely not alive. So you're just holding it in, in position there, right? And you put your thumb behind that finger, because this is what people usually do. They hold this thing like this, and don't cut like that. And it looks, it doesn't look, it doesn't look like it's comfortable, but it is. Once you get this, you get to see, just remember, claw finger like this. Right? And then you just cut. And look, I will look at you. You understand? And then you just turn it here and you cut it there and you got basically what you have there is finely chopped onions. I'll show you it again. Four eggs of garlic that have been peeled. And just do a little job there to even them out a little bit. Just mix the onions and the garlic together. Please get rid of the skin because you don't want that in there. Now we've got two little parcels of bora, of bora here, and that what you want to do is fold it in half. It's just easier to do it this way, right? Fold it in half, and then just chop it up fine. Everybody knows how to do this. Well, I don't know everybody knows what to do, but this because you just want you want it almost at the same size as the peas, right? So. So let me, let me just chop that up. Yeah, yay. There you go. Once you get close to the thread, please get rid of that bit. And you can just keep chopping. Chop with a bit. Very good. Very good. Let's just get this nice and fine. You saw my man pork, right? Just chop that up. Loosely, right? We got some parsley there. You don't need all of it, but I can. I like parsley. Chop it up. In fact, this parsley I grow in my own garden, which is really wonderful. And this is basil, basil, but it's the flower. It's when it when the plant starts to bolt, uh, and it makes this really pretty flower. But these are the seeds that go on and make other plants, but. This is so delicious. It's like ultra basil. And that's going to give, it's very, very good with meat or chicken or that kind of stuff. So we're just going to pull those off the stock, right? And now we're ready to throw everything in the pot. Mm. 
Now fire is lit. Let's put the pan on and let's just get everything in there. First, we got about a cup of oil that we're gonna put up in here. This is, this is coconut oil, best thing to cook with. Right, very good for you. I'm gonna start by putting in the garlic and the onion and the bora because those are the things that take a long time to cook. Right, then the herbs. Let's get that all in there. Carrots. Don't worry about how much time all this is going to, um, the timing of all this kind of stuff is basically all of it could go in the pot at the same time. But what I like to do is, I like to put in the things that I know are gonna cook a little bit more slowly than the other ones. It's gonna take some time to cook. But look at that color. And you kind of have to wait until, before you add anything else to this, wait until you start seeing the onions going a little bit translucent. That means that they're cooking through and instead of being kind of crunchy, they will actually have a nice, um, a nice aroma. Let's put the rest of them in there. And a nice texture. See, look, they've gone translucent already. Fantastic. So this is the time that I would add the mince, lovely chicken mince. I'm not gonna use too much of this here, right? Put it in there and try to break it up a little bit. So, because you don't want chicken balls, you don't want like big, big, big bits, right? You want kind of little bits where, now that I've just done that, and let's just mix it together. Put in our tomato paste. <laughs> right. Just wait, let this cook off a little bit and then I could add the rest of it. Well, let's see what's happening here. Oh, that looks wonderful. So now our filling is really getting going here. You see how it's nice and loose and good. Right, okay, good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the final touches. So what we're gonna do is add some sweet pepper, some weary weary pepper. Ooh, skites. Don't wanna make that too, too, uh, too, uh, too hot, but we need a little bit of black pepper. I'd say do three large uh, pinches. It's just nice to you know, get that lovely thing in a, in, a, um, <coughs> in a pie, you know, the burst of flavors. And then we're going to add some all spice there. And, last but not least, but uh, about, I don't know, about two pinches of salt. You know, I actually, you're gonna find that a lot of times in my recipes, I add salt in the end, and actually very little. Because I think if you add salt too early in your recipes, that uh, then it, it doesn't allow all the natural flavors to come together for all the different things that you have in there. And then what happens is that at the end, because there's a lack of balance, because there's too much salt, you actually have to ha add more salt in order to get the same charge out of the flavors, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this here, I'm gonna cover this over, and let that cook down really nice for about 10 minutes. And while we do that, shall we have a word from our sponsors? Leanna Kane is more than just furniture. It's a way of doing business that is holistic. A model that promotes and practices concepts of sustainability as they relate to people and the environment. Leanna Kane has won many international awards and accolades, not just for its stunning designs and architectural pieces, but also for its commitment to combat the destruction of our forest ecosystems. Liana Kane has opened a new showroom situated at 49 Aubrey Barker Road, South Rhineville, Georgetown. For further information or you would like a brochure to be emailed to you, 
call Andrea on 680 or Compton on 660-5484 or email liana underscore kane at yahoo.com. Good for the planet and good for people. Flavored cake flour made with vanilla extract is just more than flour. You must try it the next time you're baking cake. The Arawak village of Wakapo is located in the Pomeroon Supernan region of Guyana. Wakapo's oral traditions include stories of magical times during which mythical creatures such as giant macaws help to guard access to the traditional homelands. Stories that continue to be passed on between community storytellers and to the community as a whole. The two-day, one-night Wakapo community tour attempts to reveal these ancient heritage and customs to guests, from boat building to making traditional cassava bread with a local expert to visiting sacred cultural sites where origin stories are shared. The tour also gives guests a chance to experience traditional foods, as well as allow guests to immerse themselves in the natural surroundings the region has to offer. So for further information on this magical journey, please call 695-9065. Welcome to the world of the singing chef. Welcome back, guys. This is our pastry, and it's been chilled for about half an hour in the fridge. And now we've taken it out again and just let it go room temperature. What, the reason why we put it in the fridge is that it just, everything kind of goes together. It makes it much more elastic. The reason why we've made this dough, as you know, we've made it out of all-purpose flour, thunderbolt, and also uh, made marion whole wheat flour, both from the milko. The whole wheat flour really is really high in nutrients. The all, all white flour gives you, makes it where you can actually, you know, be able to roll it out and it gives you, it's got more flexibility. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut this in half. That is the top and this is going to be the bottom, right? Right. Great, now that we've got, we've just managed to pack that in there, fold it, we've got a base ready. We're gonna blind bake it in the oven at 180 degrees for 20 minutes. We are ready to put our filling in there. And I always leave it a little bit wet because for some reason this, this type of pie really benefits from like, you know, a, a little bit of water in there because we're going to cover the top. I really have to pack it in there. Actually, when you lift this up, you feel the weight of it because there's so much meat. No, that's why Guyanese like it. Oh, yeah. Right, let's get this in there. I think we're just about there. Yep, and now we're going to use all of it. Yeah. No milk will make you feel so. Okay. Right, we've got some of this in here. We've got a little bit left. Right, what do I do? Just take the rest and put it in there. And spread this evenly. Yes, wonderful. So now it's time to put our, to put on the top, okay? There we go. Yes. Yes, I rolled it out a while back, so let's see how it comes up. Yes, it's not doing too bad. It's not doing too bad, right? So we lay it over the top. I roll it back out. Don't worry if it bake up a little bit. You know, it sometimes that happens. And I'm going to fold it 
this bit. I'm just going to trim off the end, right? Like that. Trim off the end. Yes. Right. Let's just leave that there, because you might need that little bit to patch up, right? So I'm going to take a fork here, a nice big fork if you can get it, and you just crimp up the sides like this. You, you see how nice it looks already? My gosh, that looks yum, yum. Right. See, now we got our seal down. Um, we've got some over here. See? Three well-beaten eggs, right? If you don't have one of these, all you have to do is just pour the egg a little bit like, by, like this on top. Right? And then you can actually do this with your hand. Yeah? This is just to baste it. And it's, that's the quickest way to do it. You see where it's just settling? But we, what you're really trying to do is just smooth over the top. So like this. You see? Right? And now this is what you call a, an egg top. <laughs> Before we put it in the oven, are we going to put it into the oven at 180, no, about 200 degrees. I put it at 200 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. And before we put it in the oven, I'm just going to sprinkle this lovely, it's called a wheat germ. You could put it in cereal. You can put it when you're making bread and everything like that. It adds a wonderful nutty flavor. And this stuff is incredibly good for you. And it's also another one of those wonderful products that Mimilco makes. Uh, me, I love this stuff so much that I can be generous. And you see how nice that makes your pie look? This looks like a Christmas beef patty pie. When have you ever had such a big, when have, such a big beef, beef, beef patty pie, instead of having to take, eat like four or five, you just cut out a nice big piece and you're dead. All right, let me put this back here, and then we're going to put this into the oven. Okay, let's open that oven. 180, 100, 200 degrees at for about 35 to 40 minutes. So let's just put that in there. And while we're waiting for that to cook, let's have a word from our sponsors. <laughs> Chief, we put more in so you'll get more out of your cooking. Whether it's succulent baked fish or chicken, yummy pizza or creamy pasta, flavorful chow mein or tasty veggie dishes, the chief reason is always taste. Welcome to the seven curry tour. The sounds, tastes and smells of food tours are inherently experiential and a well-designed culinary experience can also be educational and participatory. Experiencing new food is a highlight of visiting any new destination and also holds memories connected to the past. The new Georgetown 7 Curry Tour is an immersive culinary experience for both visitors as well as local residents that exposes guests to the entire process of preparing 7 Curry. The meal features seven different curries eaten with rice and other accompaniments such as puri and achar. And the fun part is you get to eat it with your hands. The tour consists of Going to the local water lily area to learn about the origins of Seven Curry and gather your own water lily leaf. Travel to the market to pick up the vegetables and visit the Indy Spice Factory and see the spices being turned into amazing curry powder. See food theatre in action. Tony and his family will show you how they make the best puris. And now to make the Seven Curry, you'll be taught by the singing chef Eon John how to cook the curries in authentic outside setting and finish the day by eating the delicious curries in the charming gazebo. Come and join us. Vanilla flavored cake flour made with vanilla extract is just more than flour. You must try it the next time you're baking cake. Okay, 
you, so let us take the pie out. The Guyanese chicken patty pie. And made with whole wheat flour and all purpose flour on the boat. And there you have it. Guyanese chicken patty pie made by flour from Minoko. The milk oh, oh yes, make you feel so right, make you feel nice, oh yes, when you eat right, it's power in a flower, yes, it's power in a flower will make your roti. Put in a little channel chicken curry. If you have a little achar, that would be great. Just put it on top and give me my plate. My milk, oh. Make you feel so. Power in a flower, yes. Make you feel nice. When you eat rice. Power in the flower, yes. This power in the flower will make you nice bread. Good for the body and good for the head. If you have a little pepper, that would be great. Just put it on top and give me my plate. My milk, oh. Make you feel so. This power in the flower, yes. It make you feel nice. When you eat right, it's power in a flower, power in a flower, no milk. Oh. Make you feel so. It's power in a flower, yes. Make you feel nice. Power in a flower. When you eat right, power in a flower, power in a flower. The milk hole. Happy 50th anniversary. Welcome to the world of the singing show. We gonna make you sing and you taste for the bread. From the from a river to the east coast, my beast to the east. Make you sing and you taste for the bread. From the from a river to the east coast.